So now it's over here. Oh, it's illegal. Click it. Illegally parked vehicle in the output. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Rishraf back at it again. And without further ado, I mean, this is it. This is the illegally parked car system. You guys are gonna have a field day with this one. So let's get into it. So you guys just saw that clip of what it does look like and how it does perform. This is just a super, super simple system on how I designed it. You guys can go into code, into this, and you can go into lines and lines and make it even better and perfect it in your own way. But I'm just here to give you that little guide. So the first thing we need to do is get a car. Keep in mind, I do not own any of these. I don't take any credit for them, um, anything of that sort. And you'll see that I do use the debug here. I'm going to use the first one here. Um, this is alias Mac. So it's failed to load some things. This is why I don't like using free models. Um, but demonstration purposes, I want to, I want to show you guys uh, how this can be done. It's super simple. All we need to do is we need to insert into this a click detector. Okay. So once we have the click detector as well, we're going to go ahead and insert another object it's going to be bool value for the name we'll just call it uh parked illegally uh but i don't want to mess up the names here so i'm just going to call it um illegal because this looks like three l's it it's capital i two l's all right so now we have the bool value and the click detector now all we need to do is insert a script okay but before we go ahead and start coding, let's just make sure because I know everybody's vehicle is a lot different. We just need to go ahead and test it first, right? So I'm getting a few, um, I'm getting a few, I'm getting the hello world input. Uh, my computer mouse is very laggy because I'm sorry for the background noise. If you guys can hear it, it's doing something. Um, it's, it's loading a whole bunch of stuff in the background, but I had to hammer out this video for you guys. So you'll notice that it's working properly because the click detector is a child of the model and just it's a direct first child of the model so what's going to happen is we can click anywhere on it you could do like license plate put the click detector in the license plate it's not that deep um, but now that we have it we can click it nothing's going to happen but that's just a little test i like to conduct first then you're going to go into your script here and we'll start off by saying script dot parent dot click detector if you follow the steps correctly it's super simple and we got it so we'll say script.parent.clickdetector.mouse click connect function. You guys can see this from my last couple of videos. I've been using the click detectors because I find that a lot of people use their mouse more than the touch sensors. And I do have a lot of touch sensors on the channel anyways. Um, I haven't named my script yet. It's just called script because we're only going to work with one here. But I advise you do name this. And it's super simple. We'll say if script.parent. So we're going to get the script's parent, which is the car. In this case, it's called X6M. Script.parent, wait for child. So I like to use the wait for child so we don't return an error. We just return a warning. We'll say wait for child, call it illegal. Now, mine's going to pop up here because of the way I set up uh, my bool value here. It should for you guys too if you're following along. Press enter. If the wait for child here, then. Um, but I like to change it actually for find first child because we're not yielding anything. So just change it to find first child here. Script.parent dot find first child illegal. Then if script.parent dot illegal, we don't need to find it because we already did it once. So it, it does exist. Dot value equals true. So what is the dot value? I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit, but we'll say if it's equal equal true, then print and i just like to use the debug you guys could do take away money tow vehicle call those functions guys you can use just the output as reference and this is why debugging and output is very important we'll say illegally parked vehicle but then we need to do an else so we'll back we'll say else hit that click uh shalin uh or rishraf sorry just uh uh, make sure you cut off that part and then return now. Once we got this else in here, we'll say print car is parked. We'll just do parked legally. Um, so that way we have to have that else in there. So this checks if it's true. So our car is not illegally parked. So this right here 
this little check mark, uh, this little check box, it's gonna be not illegally parked. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these errors off just for this, and then we'll click it. Boom, cars parked legally. So once we have that, let's move it over here. Sweet. Now we're gonna click this checkbox. And you can have these like spawn as like AI cars for your like police game. I'm just giving you guys some ideas. So now it's over here. Oh, it's illegal. Click it. Illegally parked vehicle in the output. It's that easy, guys. It's you just need to think about it. Nine lines of code here. Super simple. So wristwrap, what can I do with this? Well, like I just said, I mean, have these cars randomly laid out, have this script um, do like a random number, and if you know, the random odds make the vehicle parked illegally and then in, uh, instantiate or spawn them in the illegal spots. And then once you do that, you can call the function to, you know, have it get destroyed and then the cop gets money or experience. You know, there's a ton that you can do with these little scripts. These nine, these nine lines of code scripts are super easy. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Give me a like, helps the algorithm. Give me a sub because you guys want to see more of this info. And I hope you guys have a magnificent day and destroy that like button.